Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. This is a penguin chat when I answer your questions. So if you like having your questions answered, could you take a second and click those buttons below? And let's get right into it. Today's questions come from the donuts and sprinkles video, the uh, ABO and RH blood types. I get a lot of questions uh, from these videos, you know, sample problems and things like that. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will, of course, link that below as well as other videos having to do with blood types. So I picked three what I thought were the most representative types of questions that you guys have asked me, and we're going to go through these and work them out. Uh, these came from uh, sample questions. The third one comes from a, an NCLEX exam. So hopefully uh, you'll find these questions uh, helpful. So let's see how to do some of these problems. Okay, the first question, can two RH positive parents have a child that is RH negative? So what we're going to do is keep in mind that RH, the RH antigen is inherited in Mendelian fashion. So to be RH positive, you can be either homozygous dominant, so we do use a capital D for the RH allele. Um, you can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous in order to be RH positive. The only way to be RH negative is if you carry two recessive alleles. So there are a couple of possibilities. I hope you see that if both parents are homozygous dominant, for the RH allele, all the offspring are going to be homozygous dominant, so you're not going to get any RH negative offspring. But if both of the RH positive parents are heterozygous for the trait, so we do our little Punnett square, I hope you can see now that, yeah, it's certainly possible you will get 25% of the offspring possibly being RH negative. So the answer is yes, two RH positive parents can have a child that's RH negative. Both parents have to be heterozygous, and if that's the case, you got a 25% chance. All right, the next question is one of those, you know, both parents, they give you the blood types. you got to figure out what possible blood types their offspring could have. The student who wrote me this one said, you know, the multiple choice portion just really blows her away. And I said, you know what, you're right. The approach that I would take is don't even look at the options, okay? Just do the problem, see what's possible, and then look at the multiple choice afterwards. Um, otherwise, you just get super confused. So the thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these problems is you can only give what you have. So I, that sounds like a stupid statement, but it helps my students a lot to think about it this way. So we're going to do the O and the A business, and then we'll do the RH afterwards. So Jane is O. So the only possible genotype for her is these two lowercase i's. So when you think about it, all of her eggs will carry this little i. Um, John, on the other hand, being A, well, hopefully you recall there are two ways that he could be A. He could either be homozygous for A. If that's the case, all of his sperm would be A. Okay, but it's also possible that John is heterozygous for A, in which case 50% of his sperm would give you this A, just like this one, but 50% of his sperm would give you a little I. So what you do is you look between the two parents and you see what combinations are possible. So all the options will be either A or O. Okay, what about the... RH antigen. So Jane is positive, which means that she could either be homozygous for RH or heterozygous. So that means that her eggs will either carry the big D RH positive or the little d. On the other hand, John is negative. So the only way for him to be RH negative is for him to be homozygous, right? So he, all of his sperm carry a little d. So what combinations can you make? Can you make an RH positive child? The answer would be yes, you would be heterozygous. Can you make an RH negative child? The answer would be yes, a little d here and a little d there, right? So this couple could make offspring that are either positive or negative. So that gives you, out of all the options, offspring that are A or O, and those A or O children could be either positive or negative. So now we go back to the multiple choice questions, and now hopefully you see it's not so bad because this one, letter C, that gives us all the possible options they could make, either A or O, and those offspring either RH positive or RH negative. So the answer is C. 
All right, let's look at the last one. This uh, was sent to me from an NCLEX a sample exam a student got. If the father of a fetus is Rh positive and the mother is Rh negative, what are the chances that there will be a mother-fetus incompatibility problem? Now, again, just like the previous question, part of the confusion, I think, is the multiple choice itself, the options that they give you. So again, I'm going to take the same approach. I'm not even going to look at the options. I'm going to look at the question. So the father is RH positive. Now, hopefully you've seen enough examples now that you know there are two ways you could be positive. He could be homozygous or he could be heterozygous. The mother is RH negative, so we know what she is. So what we're trying to do is come up with all the, the possibilities that will give us a fetus that is RH positive, right? Because that's the incompatibility problem. The problem is if the mom is negative and the fetus is positive. So what are the choices? So we're going to do dad here, and we're going to keep mom there. And if you do this, all of the offspring are going to be RH positive. So if the father is homozygous for RH, then 100% of the offspring are going to be RH positive, and that's going to give you that incompatibility problem. But if he is heterozygous, and here's the mom again, we know what she is. If he's heterozygous, your Punnett square is going to look like this. And you notice now only 50% of the offspring are going to be RH positive. So that's 50% if he's heterozygous. Okay, so let's look back at the options again. Hopefully now it's not quite so nasty. We can eliminate 100%. We can eliminate less than 50% because none of the options gave us that. They didn't give us zero either. We have at least 50% as the correct answer because it's 50% or 100% depending upon what the father's actual genotype is. So ta-da, the answer is B. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons below. Like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook. Follow on Twitter and ask me a question using the hashtag PenguinChat. Good luck.